All right, so here we go. Chapter 11, the Mendelian Patterns of Inheritance. This is our introduction to Mendelian genetics. Uh, very fascinating chapter. Uh, it's a, a, probably one of the hotter fields of biology right now um, because you need to understand genetics in order to... Uh, you basically need to understand genetics, and genetics can be uh, applied to many other areas of biology, um, zoology, uh, anything dealing with life. It could be used in agriculture, medicine, uh, and uh, it's good for understanding uh, another hot area of biology, which is molecular biology. And when we do talk about things like stem cells or cancer biology or the evolution of, of diseases and microbiology and how do we create medicines to cure them, um, that all comes down to understanding the principles of genetics. So this is our first chapter, chapter 11, to start this, our, our basic understanding of what this is all about. So what is genetics? Um, basically, genetics is the study of genes and inheritance. And uh, you probably have heard of inheritance before, that word. Um, maybe if someone passes away in your family, you inherit some money from them or, or some of their belongings are getting passed down. But in this case, they're not looking at uh, some type of monetary inheritance or some type of gift inheritance from someone. You're looking at the person passing on their genetic information through genes. So it's their, their traits and, and things that are being passed on. So heredity is the passing on of these traits or, or what we call characteristics from parents to their offspring. And the father of genetics is Gregor Mendel. And Mendel was an Austrian monk. Um, he lived he was a, a, a simple young man living on a farm and uh, his parents were very religious and basically um, his parents were hoping that he would uh, become a priest because he was a he was a common churchgoer but instead he uh, took up studies in the fields of both mathematics and and botany and he went on and he went to study a little bit and he did teach, uh, was a school teacher for a bit, and he basically then went to the uh, this monastery in in Austria. And his assigned duty at the monastery was to uh, maintain the gardens of the monastery. And that's really when when Mendel started to apply his his knowledge of science and mathematics, and started to conduct his genetic experiments with pea plants. Um, the field of, of biology that what Mendel was most interested in as far as his studies are concerned is botany, but uh, he used his knowledge of botany and then he was one of the first scientists to actually apply mathematics to the field of biology. So he used statistics, which is, was a relatively new area of math, and he applied statistics to biology to help him uh, basically uh, get this understanding of genetics and to which he now is a credit for being the father of genetics. And here you can see a picture of him there um, working with the pea plants in the gardens. So uh, what are the two viewpoints of heredity? At one point there was this viewpoint called the blending hypothesis and the blending hypothesis was the idea that uh, genetic material from two parents blended together. Um, this would be like an art class if you take blue paint and yellow paint and you mix it together you get green paint. Now uh, this hypothesis did stand for a little bit however there wasn't enough credible information there to back it up and it did not work when Charles Darwin the father of evolution was trying to apply some of these principles in his studies. So we knew this hypothesis did not stand true. All right, It did not support the, the way that genetics worked. And through Mendel's studies, he came up with this particulate hypothesis. And in this particulate hypothesis, it gave the idea that the parents pass on discrete inherit inheritable uh, units. So when we talk about that particulate type thing, you think of a particulate as, as some type of matter or piece of matter. And that, of course, then would be the genes. So you could substitute, substitute particulate there for the genes. So Mendel gave this idea that no, it's it's not this blending hypothesis that occurs. It's these these 
genes or particles that are being passed on from parents to their offspring to give uh, the offspring these unique characteristics. <clears throat> And basically what a gene is, a gene is a functional unit of DNA that codes for a specific trait. So DNA is one of four uh, of the uh, macromolecule groups falling under the nucleic acids. Um, there is DNA, RNA, and ATP. Um, but DNA, we know, is uh, the important molecule because as a characteristic of life, all living things are based on that universal genetic code which is held in the DNA, and that universal genetic code would be coded for in the genes. So you could have a gene, if you're talking about pea plants, you could have a gene for plant height, you have a gene for pea color, you have a gene for flower position, and we'll look at all these. The traits then are the characteristics that are going to vary from individual to individual as coded for by the DNA. So in, in the genes, you're going to code for whether that, for plant height, that plant will be short or tall, or if you're looking at the gene for pea color, whether that pea will have a yellow coloration or a green coloration. So here you can see, um, if you look here, here would be uh, different types of gene, gene for flower color, the gene for flower position, gene for seed color, seed shape, so on and so forth. And then here would be the traits to be expressed. Flower color could be purple or white. Flower position could be axial, which is in the middle or terminal at the end. Uh, seed color could be yellow or green. Seed shape could be round or wrinkled. And then you could look at other ones as well. So Mendel and genetics. Mendel documented a particulate mechanism using garden peas. Pisium sativum is the scientific name. And advantages of using peas for a study uh, included that peas exhibit many traits. And here you could see uh, the many traits that you could cross in pea plants. Uh, mating can also be controlled. Um, you can control the, 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 uh, the mating between the plants to ensure that you're only crossing one or two traits. Uh, by covering up the flowers with a little piece of netting or, or uh, using a paintbrush to transfer pollen grains from one plant to another. <clears throat> so mating could be controlled. And we know that a plant has uh, both stamens, which contain the sperm, and carpels, which contain the eggs as far as, as plant parts. So this allowed for cross-pollination. So what did what did Mendel do? A true ble breeding a true breeding plant is one that produces offspring of the same variety when they self pollinate themselves. But typically, experiments uh, involved mating of two contrasting true breeding varieties. And when you when you cross pollinate between two contrasting trait plants that are true breeding, uh, that is called hybridization. And you know that a hybrid is, is, a, is basically a mix of two things, like a, a pit bull would be an example of a dog that's a hybrid between that of a, a bulldog and a pit bull, or, or a pit, what are they called? Not a pit bull, a uh, pit bully, a pit bully. Um, so that would be a type of hybridiz hybridization there. <clears throat> so here you can see uh, how Mendel uh, carried out those experiments. There you could see the parental generation, the pea plant, that's the parent plant, um, removed the stamens from the flowers, and then he transferred sperm bearing pollen from the stamens of white uh, flower to the egg bearing carpel of the purple flower, and then he planted seeds from the pod that would develop <clears throat> after fertilization occurred and the uh, pollinated carpel matured into that pod and then planted the seeds from the pod, and then he examined the offspring, and all those offsprings ended up having uh, purple flowers. And here we see that parental generation being a, a purple flower, flower plant, true breeding flower, with a cross-pollinated with a true breeding white flower plant. And in that first F1 generation, we have all purple flowers, and we'll talk about that. So true breeding parents are the, called the P generation. The hybrid offspring result from the P generation are called the F1 generation. And then if you self, uh, self-pollinating F1 generation plants results in F2 generation offspring, 
and so on and so forth. So P stands for parental generation, and then F stands for filial, which is Latin for the son or daughter plant. So these would be the son or daughter offspring after a parental cross. <clears throat> so if you look, here you can see that experiment again, where you have that P generation, you have the true breeding purple flower plant, cross-pollinated with the true breeding white flower plant, and all the F1 generation plants are purple. Uh, they are hybrids, though, between that of, uh, of the purple and white flowers. And then if you self-pollinate two F1 plants, you have an F2 generation where you end up with three purple flower plants and one white flower plant. In the previous cross, uh, why are all the first generation plants purple and second generation plants resulted in three purple and one white flower? This is because of the chemical makeup of the genes. So now, in order to understand genetics, we need to understand uh, some basic terminology here. So genes and dominance. We know that a gene is a, 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 a region of DNA that is coded for, that codes for a, a particular trait. So a single gene can have one or more factors for that particular trait. And when we talk about those factors, we call those alleles. And alleles are variations of a gene. Examples, uh, genes for flower color, the allele you have there is one allele could represent that for purple flower color, and you could have the another allele that would represent the allele for white flower color. So you have a purple allele and a white allele. Uh, the alleles are most often represented by the uh, dominant trait. So when we cross that parental generation of the purple flower with the white flower, we saw that the resulting F1 offspring were all purple. That would be the dominant trait there. So often you'd use the letter P to represent the alleles for, for gene flower color, capital P being the dominant allele and lowercase p being the recessive allele representing white coloration. So alleles can be dominant or recessive. Uh, Mendel's principle of dominance basically states that some alleles are dominant and others are recessive. In, in a case of where you have complete dominance, if the dominant allele is present, the dominant trait will be expressed. And we did see that when we crossed the purple flower with the white flower. Uh, the recessive trait, therefore, will only be present if two recessive alleles are in the gene. So you'd have to have two little p's, a little p and a little p. And the alleles of a gene are usually represented by the dominant trait. So here you can see that again. So the gene for flower color gives you uh, purple as dominant, so capital P for purple, lowercase p for white. In order to have that white trait being expressed, you'd have to have two lowercase p's uh, represented in that particular gene of the plant. The genotype is the genetic makeup of the gene. Uh, basically, there are three basic types of genotypes. You could have a genotype that is homozygous dominant, which is two dominant alleles. You could have a genotype that is heterozygous, which is one dominant allele and one recessive allele. And you could have a genotype that is homozygous recessive, which is two recessive alleles. Homozygous genotypes are typical of the true breeding plant. So that purple flower true breeding parent plant had a homozygous dominant capital P, capital P, genetic makeup. And the white plant, flowered plant in that parental generation cross from the beginning of the, of the lecture had that homozygous recessive genotype, which were uh, two recessive alleles to give white coloration, which would be little p, little p. The phenotype then is the physical characteristic seen from the genes of that genetic makeup. So sticking with the, the cross between the purple flower and the white flower, that would be purple, being one phenotype for that gene and white being the other phenotype for that gene. And the genotypes and phenotypes of genetic crosses are represented in ratios. And we'll talk about that in our next lecture.